Huh, let's try another one. Nice. What about a two liter? <laughs> oh, I missed a chance to shoot a moving target. Hickok 45 here. Uh, I might be a sinner, but I've got a saint in my hands. I just had to use that corny joke. That's pretty lame, wasn't it? But that's what the gun is called, the rifle. It's the uh, Springfield Armory Saint. If you can read, you already knew that, right? And it's fairly new, fairly new. I've had lots of requests to uh, try it out. So uh, we're very fortunate to have lots of people helping us put this in our hands with ammo. Not bad, huh? I just furnished the uh, Genius. Well, not all about that, but I a uh, place to shoot the thing. How's that? Pretty cool. It's a pretty cool rifle. I uh, have been shooting it, and uh, it's it's done okay. I will tell you when I first got it, and that's hot. I can tell by the temperature. It's very hot right now, so we'll point her down range. But the first, it was towards the end of the first magazine, as I recall. Uh, the trigger reset uh, got funky and, and wasn't resetting, and uh, I thought it was a major problem. Messed around with it, and it got to working again, and I haven't any trouble. So I, I, I'm assuming it was just brand new out of the box. Well, it was brand new out of the box. It was uh, maybe a burr or something on something in the trigger, and it's been working since. And because of that, I've uh, had it for a couple of weeks. I made sure I brought out a magazine about every day, and I just shot the thing and I couldn't get it to do that again. So it was some uh, something to do with the break-in, I guess, or whatever, a burr on it or whatever. So anyway, she's doing fine. And uh, I think I've got the sights on. I, I've got it, I'm not gonna adjust them anymore. It was shooting, let's see, what was it? It was shooting low and I moved the front sight. Uh, and I got it in pretty good shape. I think if it was mine, I was gonna hang on to it. I might want it to uh, not have to hold the sight post up as, quite as high on the target as I'm as I'm noticing I'm having to do, but it's okay. You might prefer it that way. You know, whoever buys this thing in the e-gunner auction might might think that's exactly the way it ought to be. But uh, anyway, the Saint. Uh, well, let me get this magazine. We're shooting, uh, like I say, Federal here, just typical 55 grain ammo here, and. Uh, uh, that's a Daniel Defense uh, magazine in it. So since we'll just shoot two or three mags, I thought I'd try different magazines again, the Lancer and then the Magpul, as we uh, just shoot this thing. All right. Comes with the flip-up sights from Springfield Armory. And uh, the, uh, well, we'll talk about the other stuff here in a second. I want to do a little bowling first. Yeah. <laughs> and let's make a splash. Well, is that thing frozen or something? I don't know, I must not have caught him very, very well. And let's just start out with smoking a little pot right here. Yeah. Whew. That was a tricky shot, believe it or not, because there's metal right there and I didn't want to hit it. And uh, I see some more pot back there behind that target stand. Yeah. <laughs> let's go ahead and put a couple on there. See if we'll go through the paper. Hey, that's not bad for Kentucky windage. I was uh, just holding up somewhere around the top of the, <laughs> the dot there. Mm. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. All right. Explosions. Don't we love them? Eee, doggies. <laughs> oh, this is too much fun. Uh, let's go back over there. Oh, I see a two-liter sitting over there. And there was a little cinder there. When's it going to run out of ammo? Okay, I begin to wonder. Those Daniel Defense mags hold 32. I think I had it all the way loaded. Uh, so, anyway. Yeah, the, the Saint. Kind of a screwy name, maybe, you know, uh, not a name I would have used to name a rifle, but so be it, Springfield Armory. Uh, they're the ones making the rifle. I can't make one. They're manufacturing them, so they can call them whatever they like. I think, I, you know, I suspect, I'll have to ask him at SHOT Show. I have a feeling that name was come up by Rob Latham, probably, after a few beers at the local bar. Yeah, let's call it the Saint, and he wrote it on a napkin, you think? Just kidding, Rob. Actually, it might have been it. But uh, anyway, it is called the Saint. 
and it's their first AR-15. So uh, everybody's curious about it. I was curious about it, and because uh, they just have not made these, and I, I think they have plans to make more of them. So uh, they've done some things differently. This one is, at, uh, I think the MSRP is $899. I don't know what they're selling for exactly. Uh, well, I don't know. Actually, the MSRP might be more than that. It might be over nine, but uh, they're running somewhere around nine hundred dollars. Okay, depending on where you find them, and that takes it up above that six hundred and fifty dollar, you know, area. You know, like the M and P Sports and some of the others, or six whatever they're selling for now. So that adds, uh, you know, maybe a couple hundred bucks or so uh, over the lowest end ARs that you buy on the commercial market. And I know, as everybody always points out, when you do AR. Uh, videos that I could have made that for two hundred dollars in my garage and everything and, and you probably could uh, but then a lot of people are attracted to AR-15 well AR-15 is in general the most popular rifle in the country uh, but a lot of people are especially I think attracted to to these things when they're made by a major manufacturer it's just it's just simple now you might think that's silly and there's no real justification for it but it's just a matter of, it's a fact of life if ruger comes out with one as they have of course or, M or uh, smith and wesson or uh, you know, springfield armory it's just it carries the weight of that name with it okay so you might actually build a better one in your garage but if your name is harry johnson or harry smith or something you know, it's just it's just not going to carry the weight. You know, so it's just that's just life. Uh, so this one, they've added a few things to to justify you know it not being 650 bucks. I guess you'd say. For one thing, it's got the Bravo Company furniture on it, and then I see. I think this is exclusive to this firearm. You know, the handguard, which is kind of. I mean, I kind of like. I generally don't like this design on a handguard. Colt's got some, and everybody's got some that look a little bit like that. This one's a little slimmer, so, you know, that's not bad. It's not as offensive to me. I, I, in fact, I don't have a problem with this one. And it's got the key mod and everything, and it's insulated well. Well, I shot it a fair amount. I've not really had any heat problems there at all. And then the, uh, the stock, six position stock, the, uh, the uh, pistol grip, the trigger guard, all that is Bravo Company, okay? And they have an excellent reputation, so that's that's pretty cool, you know. Uh, that comes with it, and uh, they've got a tungsten uh, buffer, a heavy buffer with a mid-length gas system on it, and makes it a soft shooting rifle, and it really does. So some of those things you might not get, you know, with just any AR-15. So they have tried to do a few things to uh, to dress it up a little bit. It's got a one and eight twist on the barrel, chrome molly vanadium barrel. It's not chrome lined. Uh, but it's uh, they use the melanite on it, which is supposed to be really really good stuff. Okay on the barrel uh, You've got your of course your birdcage, you know front sight here uh, Some people probably won't like that. Uh, I Don't know I, It still seems odd when people put those on these days unless you're trying to make a fully traditional AR-15 But you see several of them like that, you know kind of a hybrid and uh that's what you got, and but you've got your uh, flip-up side here removable, so you can put anything back here you want, uh, red dot or other other uh, backup iron sights, whatever you might like there. It's nice that those come with it, so you don't have to buy those, right? One thing that'd been nice if Bravo Company had provided, well, it, they couldn't provide it for nothing, but is a charging handle. I've gotten to where I, I really like the charging handles that they make. What's it? The number four, I guess. I have it on all of my ARs, I think now. And uh, so I really notice it when I uh, don't have just that little bit of extra grip on those charging handles. <laughs> so ironically, here I am shooting, I've got, got all these Bravo Company parts on it. So I've got this funky old charging handle that I'm not used to anymore. But, you know, it does fine. A lot of people prefer that minimalist uh, charging handle anyway. Let me quickly show you inside here. Uh, it's, uh, let me put that thing back together. Let me, I double check it, yeah, because I shot it dry. I just, uh, that's right, I remembered that. I just, uh, always best to err on the side of safety, right? Come on now, I've been able to punch that thing out without using a hammer. It's tight. It is tight. Let me get a bullet, push on it. It, uh, this gives me an opportunity to talk about the other feature. It has this Accu, what's it called? Accu Tight, I think it's called. And it, uh, it, it helps keep the, the firearm tight. And uh, 
I think you go in up under the pistol grip. I didn't take that off, but there's a little uh, kind of a polymer piece that puts pressure up against the upper. And you know, why would that be so tight all of a sudden? I've been pushing that thing out for a week or two with my thumb. And now I've got her. There we go. And it's always better if it is a little tight. I have had ARs where you could never push them out with your thumb. You had to, you know, get a, something to pound on a little bit because a lot of them start out tighter than they are. And there it is right there. That little, if you can see that little green tip, I believe that's the, you can kind of raise it a little bit if it begins to get loose at all. So it keeps your AR, your lower and your upper from being uh, sloppy. Okay. It's definitely not sloppy right now. And, uh, and you know the bolt they use all the right the carpenter 158 steel it's uh everything is you know, staked you've got the you know magnetic particle testing and inspection on it and everything shot peened you know so it's you know it's supposedly done right you know and uh and i'm not going to take the bolt apart but uh they wanted to you know do the the right things the key things uh to it so it's not a uh, bargain too big a bargain AR because uh, you know you don't want one of these if it's not done if it's not at least put together right the basics of it and you got your what 75 76 T6 uh, aircraft aluminum lower and upper you know all the stuff that you would like to have and that the better ARs you know have so uh, if I think of something else here I'll tell you let's see let's try the Lancer mag while we're out of here all right got the yeah bolts forward okay there i am loading the magazine too tight <laughs> oh all right well my ears on because it's an ar-15 if you all have never fired one of these firearms i mean seriously i joke about that but if you have never fired one of these and you take one of these you buy one and take it out to the range for the first time make sure your ears are in tight They are very, very loud. Chloe, cascade. Sorry, buddy. Couldn't resist. Oh, I know the two liter. <laughs> oh, man. Let's go bowling some more. Uh, let's go back over there and try that middle red plate. Yeah. Oh, power. I'll try the little one. Nice. Go back to the big one. It'll work, I tell you. It will work. There's another 11 ounce or 12 ounce. Ah, oh, some cinder <laughs> on the last round. Yeah, man. Uh, what else did I not lie about? Uh, well, you know, I try to be, a, well, I am, I'll try. I'm objective on these things. We've looked at several ARs. I'm not the AR expert. Uh, again, I've owned one since 84. I own several, but one since 84, 83 and have shot them that long and but i don't study them i'm not a, a an ar nerd i guess you might use that term i uh, just enough to know and when i'm not sure i take the easy route just like i did with ak's i uh i got the arsenal and uh, for my own personal firearms uh you know i just try to save up and and, and get one i know is good and uh, but everybody doesn't do that some people cannot do that they uh, they cannot have an ar if they have to pay more than 673 dollars or something you know so they're really studying and looking for getting the best for their their money you know or 800 or 900 whatever it is and uh so you, you really want to know as much as you can about them and again there is not a, a great deal of difference you can almost buy these things like going to a hardware store and on orders i'd like an ar i'd like a you know, whatever chrome molly barrel i don't want it uh, chrome lined i want it melanite or i want it chrome lined and i want such and such uh, flash hider such and such sight system uh, gas system mid-length carbine rifle length system and i want uh, you know just the, the various features stocks and all of that 
a trigger, and you know, it's probably going to be exactly what you ordered. You know, unless you order from again somebody that's just putting the first one together they've ever put together. Speaking of triggers, uh, it is just a mil spec trigger. Okay, and I'm reminded as I shoot it, it's not a, it's not like night and day as compared with most of my. I've got custom triggers and most of my ARs now. It's taken me a while, but I think every AR I own either came with a better trigger, uh, a CMC or a Geisley or some kind of better trigger, and so you get spoiled by that quickly. And this one is uh, nickel boron coated, and as I shoot it, I, I don't. It doesn't stand out as a bad trigger at all, but I'm reminded it is a mil spec trigger as I shoot it. It's uh, the reset seems a little long on it to me, uh, but uh, it, it does fine. It's one of the best mil spec triggers probably I've, I've owned. I've had some horrible mil spec triggers. That first AR I bought, the 80 in 84, 83, is a horrible trigger on that thing. Oh man. Uh, I guess maybe I've not changed that one out because I wanted to keep it stock. Yeah, that one is the one I've not changed out. It's, it's got, got, not got a good trigger on it. But this has a mil spec trigger. And uh, you would probably, if you're uh, you know, accustomed to a really nice trigger, you would probably want to change it out. Nickel boron and all. <laughs> okay, whatever nickel boron is. I don't have that around the house. I'll check the pantry later. But uh, I don't know if I need it. I'll shoot a couple more shots on it because it's... I'll just shoot a couple more. We didn't actually test the Magpul magazine, did we? And you might not be convinced a Magpul magazine will work. All right? Is there anybody on the planet left that doesn't know that they make great magazines? Okay. Uh, you know, like I said, like I said uh, these run somewhere around $900. Mil spec tube. We got the Bravo Company furniture almost all the way across. And, uh, you know, one and eight twist on the barrel. Yeah, so, and it's made by Springfield Armory. Oh, I just messed up. Might have to use the forward assist. Yeah, what'd I do? I just, just jacked that one out if I can. <laughs> I messed around and I, I went loaded it, if you notice that. That was all me on that one brand new gun and I just kind of eased the bolt down like a wimp all right put a couple on this All right, she works. So the Saint, uh, you know, I don't know what to, to tell you. Kind of looks like you're you're kind of getting what you pay for. I think, I uh, if I were buying one in this price range, this would be on my list because I like the furniture on it. Because most of us, uh, most of us trade. Well, it's a stiff stock. I have to say, you got really. Uh, if you take that thing all the way forward, be ready for a a battle getting it back but it's brand new uh but it feels good and uh, the grip feels really good and i guess some of you probably already have the, the bravo company pistol grips on your your firearms maybe but i don't think i've had one of those it's a little bit more of a 90 degree angle it feels good and i have to say the the handguard feels good so it's got some pluses on it and uh it's probably as far as i guess you'd say lower end ars mid-range ars go uh with what it has on it and the way it's made, and then of course the Springfield Armory name doesn't hurt. I I wouldn't say it's overpriced. I think some of the early reports I read, people, were, why why is it nine hundred dollars or nine hundred fifty dollars or whatever the thing sells for, uh, where you buy it, when you can get an AR, a basic AR for six fifty or seven hundred. You know why is it a couple hundred dollars more or more? And it looks like it has uh, the features that justify that. Just from my limited standpoint and my limited knowledge really so anyway it works pretty cool we'll send it back to buds and let them auction the thing off i'll put the target in the box like i always do and uh we appreciate you coming by it's been very saintly hasn't it so it's pretty ironic a sinner shooting a saint right life is good since i'm still here let me thank sdi for all their help sdi is a fully accredited online gunsmithing school check them out at sdi.edu We'd also like to thank 
Bud's Gun Shop and Federal Premium for all of their support. You can find us on Full 30 also now, and you can find the links to our Facebook pages and the other YouTube pages in the description of any video. So I invite you to check out the description in every video or any video, you'll find what you need to know. And you'd better do it.